Thank you so much for speaking with me today, JP. Um, just a quick background about yourself, quick synopsis. You've been a human rights activist, specifically focusing on Africa for about 30 years now. You've worked for President Clinton, the State Department, National Security Council, and numerous non-governmental organizations, including the Enough Project, which you actually co-founded with Gail Smith. You are a best-selling author with 10 published works, including Not On Our Watch, Unlikely Brothers, and The Enough Moment, Fighting to End Africa's Worst Human Rights Crimes. How did you become involved in human rights work, and have you always been interested in Africa? Since I was pretty young, I, uh, I was one of these rebels, not unlike yourself, against injustice. Just when things were wrong, you know, in, in your own neighborhood or in your own family. So I, I, I was a rager, you know, I just it was angry about wrong and wanting to make it right from a very young age. And, and so that manifested itself in a desire to work in, um, in youth programs in the United States. That was what I thought I was going to dedicate my life to. And, uh, but I was waylaid by pictures of the famine that unfolded in Ethiopia in the early to mid-1980s. I just, I couldn't believe that, that injustice in the form of a million people starving to death could exist on such a scale. And, um, and, I, and I felt like I had to go there and understand it better. Eventually I got there and, uh, and learned over time where I felt I could fit in in terms of the big picture of how to make a difference in these issues. You're the co-founder of the Enough Project, which is an NGO that seeks to address genocides and mass atrocities in Africa through a combination of grassroots activism and the three Ps, um, or peace, punishment, and protection. Can you explain why Enough has taken the three P approach and the impact that it's having today? The very basis for the 30 years that I've worked in international relations and the very basis of US, European Union, and other uh, entities' policies towards crises in Africa, which is sending peacekeeping troops, sending peace negotiators, um, uh, hoping that some form of justice may prevail. I've slowly come to the conclusion that this model has largely failed in the deepest crises in Africa. And uh, as a result, um, our, our new emphasis going to be sort of unveiled and un, 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 unfurled over the course of this coming year, 2016, uh, is a focus on what we think are, is the core driver of violence in Africa today, which is the hijacking of states by small groups of people uh, uh, and the creation of these violent kleptocracies. What these violent kleptocracies do is they strip mine the extraordinary natural resource wealth of Africa for the benefit of those in power. We've hired these financial forensic investigators to map the assets, the flow of money. We are going to be providing the information about all of this vast money and wealth that has been stolen from Africa and the networks that are doing it. We're, gonna, we're providing that information to governments that can actually freeze and seize it unless the driving force for why these crises continue is addressed, which is the element of the, the vast corruption, mass corruption that enables uh, 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 the violence to flourish. Unless that's addressed, I think there, there won't be any change.